Hey, happy Friday, everyone. It's Meredith. I'm here with our message for the 23rd of September, 2022. We're using the This Might Hurt Tarot for our message today. Happy Libra season. Happy birthday, Libra. <laughs> that happened on Thursday. Yes, the autumn equinox. Uh, and what else? So the sun's in Libra. The moon is in Leo, but it's moving into Virgo. This weekend on Sunday, we have a new moon occurring in Libra. We have a lot going on in the cosmos. So I will do a separate reading all about our retrograde planets. And we'll talk a little bit about the eclipses coming up in October and November. Both of those are happening in Scorpio. And I believe the first one is a partial solar eclipse, October 20-something. And yeah, so that's happening in Scorpio. I think there's a new moon happening with it. So we'll want to check that out because we know how powerful the eclipse season is. We've been a witness to it all through the summer since the eclipse is in the spring. And I feel it's wise for us to prepare and make the very most of our eclipse season. So we'll get on that in the readings as well. Let's see what's going on in the energy atmosphere today. We had quite a shuffle, as you can see, by the number of cards on the table. The first two out. <laughs> nice. Four of Swords. This card's been making quite a showing lately. <laughs> and the Eight of Pentacles. Wow. Hey, you know what? That looks like my yesterday. <laughs> yeah. The Eight of Pentacles is keep doing what you're doing because it's working for you. <laughs> Love that it's paired with the Four of Swords sleeping. I don't know exactly what came over me yesterday, though I'll just say it felt like running into some sort of energetic brick wall. And yeah, I was the Four of Swords. <laughs> However, a lot went on in the day, which is, you know, amazing and fantastic. And then in the night, I had epic epic dreams did anything like that happen for the rest of you on the equinox leave some comments let's hear about it so i love this pairing because the four of swords has been showing up quite a bit lately as i mentioned so we're in a stable we're in a stable energy a stable place our thoughts are quite stable as well and we've had the message about A dynamic momentum within the energy atmosphere and we have contributed about all we can contribute to this point and it's time for us to put our feet up relax receive this is so beautifully portrayed by the four of swords and it's a reminder that the four of swords is also a card of preparation we've we've received the message on repeat that the universe has our back. It's got all of our heartfelt, heart-centered, heart-spaced visions, dreams, goals, achievements in its hands. And I feel the Eight of Coins is a beautiful demonstration of what's going on behind the scenes. So while we rest, relax, put our feet up and prepare and take a time out when the universe says, hey, guess what? You can't take another step forward right now. <laughs> As evidenced by yesterday's heavy nap day, uh, I, I'm doing the heavy lifting for you behind the scenes. So basically get out of the way is what I, I sense here. And... You know, I've come into this day, Friday, completely supercharged. So it was very worthwhile. Let's let's see what else we got going on here. Mm. Well, looky there, another four in one of our uh, most amazing fours. It's the four of wands, the happiest in the minor arcana of tarot. Do you see this here? Can you look at that set and really embrace the message that the universe is giving us through the tarot? Because here we are building, preparing with grace and ease on the Four of Swords, making an amazing investment 
through the aid of coins, diligently contributing, investing our energy into our Four of Wands. We're stepping through the portal of the Four of Wands into our bliss, into our joy and our happiness. Excuse me, let's see where it's going. Nice, look at that. Oh, I love these cards. I just love the tarot cards. Here's the Three of Wands following the Four. And this shows us looking at our horizon. So we're not resting on our laurels at all. We are rolling stones and we are not gathering any moss because we're going to keep moving here. I love this. So we may be in somewhat of a dream state. I feel a great energy of receiving here. Another message that came several weeks in a row was keep your arms and your hearts wide open to receive what the divine delivery system is actually delivering. And earlier this week, we had the Wheel of Fortune and it was a profound message of receiving. I think the Nine of Cups might have been in there somewhere too. So everything fulfilling. Oh, it was the Death card in the Ace of Cups, if I recall correctly. Transforming our vision, looking at our horizon and seeing it come to fruition and overflow from the transformation of the Death card, the purifying energy of the Death card, and, <clears throat> pardon, the divining cosmic gift of love, bliss, joy, happiness on overflow through the Ace of Cups. And what have we done with that? We've received, we've, we're continuing to dream and invest in our heart space, whatever we nurture there. We are continuing to contribute eight of coins as we actualize <laughs> our four of wands. And as we stand on this stable foundation, we continue to look at the horizon. Hmm, isn't that beautiful what comes next? <laughs> card witching, there it is. There's the death card, more transformation. I also feel uh, the momentum in the energy atmosphere that you know we're mentioning here in the cards or the cards are showing us we are in a beautiful flow of energy and i feel that the death card is seeing us through this dynamic momentum lots of transformative energies here i i also feel intuitively as i look at these cards and i contemplate the change of season the change of sun sign and the oncoming eclipse energy, I feel that we're taking all of this into the next eclipse season. So while we've had a spring summer season full of manifestation, lots of fulfillment, lots of emotional fulfillment, joy, celebration, I feel the cards are amping us up for more of that through the, the fall and winter seasons. These are times where things go typically a bit quieter just because of, <laughs> wow, <laughs> the stereotypical definition of the seasons. I don't sense it's gonna go that way. It does not have to be a stereotyped, quieter, hibernating type of energy. I, I don't think we're going into fall or winter in that vein at all. And I feel that the death card is the herald of that message because look what is flowing along with the death card we're going to be seeing our dreams come to come to life come awake on our beautiful foundation which will inspire more dreaming which will inspire more transformation and where is all this going right into the lovers yes embracing our Inner harmony, our inner balance, our divine masculine, our divine feminine. This is us embracing the choices of our heart. We're going to continue to follow our heart and build on everything we nurture in heart space. Let's see what is on the bottom of the deck and how the universe is supporting us. And this dynamic energy. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Don't stop now. There's the six of swords. Oh. Ooh, look at that coming with the eight of cups see we are absolutely rolling stones through this type of energy through this this momentum and these seasons we're not stopping we're going to continue traveling 
in this flow of manifestation. We're not going into hibernation at all. Hmm. I'm hearing from my guides we'll be garnering our gains. So at times it will look like the Four of Swords, like we are still in at rest. Though it will maintain a consistent, ever-evolving manifestation of everything we're holding in heart space. Everything does have its own season. We're staying, we're staying in harmony with the bloom, with the harvest. Coming, coming on next is the sun with the world. And one more, the six of wands. Yeah, victory, success, homecoming to the self, homecoming to one's own heart space, living victoriously, living fruitfully, inspired and passionate. You know, this is a card about fertility as well. So very fertile energy, staying alive and awake and in motion throughout the oncoming seasons. I don't see an end in sight there. So we have the sun and the four of wands showing in the reading. The sun is shining on the world, which is the reward of all of your prior effort and investment in living in that flow. Look at the momentum here. In the Six of Swords, Eight of Cups, and Six of Wands, it will continue. It will continue. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Angel Answers. Wow. Flying out of the deck. Oh, one of my favorites. Communicate clearly. Love this card. Be a great listener. Ask really good questions. Confirm, do not assume. And eliminate verbal clutter. Get to the heart of the matter and speak from the heart. Then we have helpful people. Those two fell out together. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the trust card. Trust your tribe. What you decide to share with others. Uh the helpful people around you, your guides, your angels, your ancestors, your nearest and dearest people. Trust in your tribe. That's what I hear here. That's what I hear <laughs> in this moment. And communicate clearly with these folks and listen well to what they have to share. One more. And no matter what anyone has to say <laughs> or share, run it through your intuition and trust that above all else. Okay, one more from the Elemental Oracle deck. How is our soulful presence whispering to us today? Life, breath, yeah, breathe. <laughs> Been reminded of this several times recently. Breathe, folks. Take a breath, take a pause, take a beat before you say or do anything. Collect yourself. As we said earlier in the reading here, garner your gains and be motivated from your breath of life. <laughs> Have a beautiful Friday, everyone. Peace, love, joy, happiness. I'm about to do another reading. I'm going to do a retrograde reading. So I will attach it to the end of this video as soon as it's done and uploaded. But be on the lookout for that. Namaste.